So Damian Williams of the Kansas City Chiefs has notified the Chiefs that he is opting out this season. And so the Clyde Edwards Hilaire hype train was already in motion. And I feel like it went from a nice little like it was kind of going downhill and a little bit gaining steam. And then Damian Williams opted out. And now it's like straight down plummeting going six million miles an hour welcome to the Clyde Hilaire Clyde Edwards Hilaire hype train like get on or you know lose your seat I don't I don't even know like so there's talks now it's like would you rather have because this is we're in coming up on draft season at the beginning of August would you take Clyde Edwards Hilaire or Josh Jacobs in a fantasy football draft oh before I answer that question, All let right. me just say this. Let me just say this. Two days ago, I did a podcast and Clyde, I did, we did bust picks. Well, guess who was my bust pick? Ah! Bust pick. <laughs> Clyde's Edwards Hilaire. Ah! Uh, for the reason that I thought he was going insanely too high in drafts uh, with so many other bodies there. DeAndre Washington, we mentioned earlier. Damian well. Williams. Daryl Williams. Yeah, Daryl Williams, right? So many other bodies there. And with a COVID with a COVID shortened off season, I was looking at all rookies with a grain of salt. Yeah. I, I just didn't think it was possible for rookies to produce like they have in years past with less time to really study the playbook and learn the systems. Uh, that just shows you how fast news changes because I don't think that anymore. No. I mean, you could have argued that he would have been the RB2 and played second fiddle or at least shared committee for those first few weeks in Kansas City. Uh, that doesn't really happen anymore. He's now in the most high powered offense in the NFL. And he's an RB1. I mean, he, yeah. in my argument the other day, he was a 2.9, 3.1. So right there in the back of the second half, early third round. Now he's guaranteed to shoot up to at least I I, I don't even know he's going to go I think yeah back of the second. first early second I think he's going to nestle in right at the turn and I think the only reason that he nestles in there I think he probably in most leagues will end up getting drafted top half of the second just because nobody is going to want to pull the trigger on a rookie who won't have any preseason and you won't actually get to see the guy play against NFL caliber talent like so it's going to make some I think a lot of drafters nervous to take him in that first round yeah but my argument I could see how he does I could absolutely see how he finishes as a top 10 top 12 running back and is an RB one. He's in the most prolific offense or one of the top two. If you want to count the Ravens in prolific offenses in the league, but he is five, seven. <laughs> the guy is five freaking seven. Like you said, that was like a bad thing. I'm five, eight. But well, I get it. I no, get it. I get it. At the I goal line. It. If you got six seven <laughs> 400 pound dudes trying to fall on you maybe maybe they put daryl williams in at the goal line is all i'm saying because when damian williams got hurt last year they didn't really turn to LaShawn mccoy they more or less leaned on daryl williams who to our knowledge has not opted out um and so i'm just i'm worried about i'm worried about Obviously, well, LaShawn's obviously gone now, too. Uh, our next bit of news, he uh, has now signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tampa, Tampa, whatever you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> so Damien's opting out. LaShawn's gone. You got Daryl Williams, DeAndre Washington, and Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I'm not sure if he gets the goal line, but I don't really know if it matters. I think he has to be efficient to score at least on the ground. But I think that their offense is so spread out. Like, you know, the, the hyper yeah. always I'm glad running, you mentioned that always I'm running that hyper active two minute spread offense. I just, I don't see a way that he, he's, he's still on the field, although he might not be getting the carries at the goal line. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and, Again, I'll say it for a third time. I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, when you look at an offense like Kansas City, you think, oh, man, that, that's a good one. I look at it similar in coaching style. I, I think of the Patriots and how Bill Belichick yeah. is a mastermind of offensive capabilities. And 
that doesn't necessarily mean, hey, I have one weapon. You have an assortment of weapons. And that's what's good. That's what makes NFL teams great, right? So you look at Kansas City and you have um, you have Andy Reid there, same type of coach. He doesn't care about your fantasy team. No. And up until two years ago, before Kareem Hunt went and kicked a girl, I mean, we haven't seen a workhorse back yet. Right. They've been a committee backfield and people are just still so juiced on them because of that high powered offense. So you're likely to get, you know, a weekly flex play or a, maybe a high end two on a really, really lucky day. But if you look at that team last year, sure, they had Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey who finished as a tight end two and Tyreek Hill who finished up there in the top 10 or 11. They definitely had their bust week. So nobody was consistent on that team. You had Kelsey, who had a lot of great weeks and a few really dud weeks. And the same could be said for Tyreek Hill. And I think that's going to translate to the running back position as well, Uh, which is why, to answer your question, I think I'm going Josh Jacobs on the basis that he's such a consistent, more dependent value uh, in that same draft capital area, which they are now going to find themselves in. And I'd rather have that consistency than that high bust, high reward type of player. Like if I'm looking for that kind of player, that's like seventh, eighth, ninth round when I'm looking for that high end flex play. And I just think, again, especially with a shortened off season due to COVID, you know, even if he is thrust into that role, that's still a huge learning curve to undertake. And, you know, week eight on, that guy's going to win you some seasons, most likely. Yeah. But you but have to get him right now. Retra- I think you're going to have to get him in the second round to get him, though. Yeah. And you don't want that. Like, I don't want that. I don't think there's a chance that Andy Reid puts in a rookie that hasn't played in a game or any game experience on third downs for the first like month of the season, protecting your half billion dollar man in Patrick Mahomes. I don't think that that ha- like I don't think that happens. I'm sorry. Like, maybe I'm wrong. I could be. I hope I'm wrong for everybody that's already drafted him or does. Like, I just. And then Daryl Williams is bigger. I'm just. I'm still worried about it because I know DeAndre Washington is a capable fill-in. He showed he was capable last season when he filled in for Josh Jacobs. Like he, the guy's not a slouch. If any, I think he's either on par or better than Lashawn was last year. Like, mm-hmm. so. I'm still worried about Clyde Edwards Hilaire. The hype train is rolling and it's rolling fast. And I, I just, I think I'm going to miss him. I would, I would take Josh Jacobs over Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I would take Miles Sanders over Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I would take Joe Mixon over Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I would take like all of those guys. And so for that, like I'm, I'm going to miss him because somebody's going to be like, Kareem Hunt was running back number four in this offense, and I want running. And like, okay, go for it. This guy's five seven. <laughs> He's not going to be running it in at the six inch line. Yeah, so. I mean, all of those running backs you mentioned, I think I'd rather have. Uh, this is particularly the redraft I, in a dynasty league. That could be different. Oh, oh in a dynasty, dynasty league, redraft. Yeah. I mean, that's that's running back. That's number one overall pick now. But, yeah. Uh, in, in a, I mean, redraft this year, yeah, I, I'm going to let that hype train, like you said, just, just just go right on by. In a dynasty league, the way I answered it, somebody put out a, a, a Josh Jacobs, Joe Mixon, Miles Sanders, and Clyde Edwards Hilaire dynasty. Who would you take? And my answer was long term i think all four of those guys generally have the same role except joe mixon doesn't get the passing down uh responsibilities because they have geo but the other three could potentially be three down backs so at that point i'm probably picking the best offense which would be the clyde edwards hilarious of the world it's just for redraft for this season i am i he's my he's the you know in fourth out of those four guys just because you have to take him as he's going to finish as a top 10 guy and you have to draft him there, but I don't think he produces as a top 10 guy to start the season. So, 